Hi everyone, and welcome to today's presentation, 10 Tips and Tricks You Have to Know When Using ProjectWise. My name is Bill D. Gregorio, and I'm the Bentley Global Director of ProjectWise Professional Services. For those that may not know me, a quick introduction. Prior to Bentley, I had over 15 years of experience in the design engineering field. I actually started out on the drafting board, moved over as a CAD designer, and then ultimately, some point in the 90s, CAD manager. In 2006, I came to Bentley, and my first nine years were as a ProjectWise senior consultant. In 2015, I had the opportunity to move over to the ProjectWise senior manager role of the Americas. And in 2019, again, I had an opportunity to move to the director of global ProjectWise professional services, which is the role I hold today. As for my agenda, it's pretty straightforward. I'll start with a brief overview, then jump right into my top 10 tips. I'll close, probably like the other presentations, with a live question and answer period. During the Q&A, I'll do my best to answer any questions you may have on what I presented. I'm also thinking that maybe some of you can share some of the quick tips you've learned over the years. We'll see how that goes. My approach to this session was simple. First, I have a feeling that this audience is going to be a mix of newer and seasoned ProjectWise colleagues. And for that latter group, unfortunately, there's not going to be too many tips or tricks that I'm going to be able to show you. So this session is going to target more of the new user. But hopefully, everyone will walk away with at least one tip they didn't know, or perhaps a tip they didn't remember. I'll be bouncing between this PowerPoint presentation and ProjectWise Explorer, where I will demo each tip. Also, my goal is not to get too detailed. Understand that I only have about 30 minutes for this presentation, so I'm intentionally steering clear of complex topics. Next, my initial plan was to set the focus for this session, which is project-wise design integration. I mean, think about it. This session can go a whole bunch of different ways, so I had to set some level of a boundary. And I've done that, apart from one tip that I changed at the last minute, because... Interestingly, I had two users that asked me about it last week. It's a simple tip, but I kind of took that as a sign, so I included it here. I'll point it out when I get to it. I'm not sure how many of you sat in my session the other day where I talked about Bentley Professional Services. If you did, you'll recognize this slide. To recap, our ProjectWise Professional Services colleagues are located in one of three regions. The Americas where we have colleagues located in Brazil, Canada, and the United States. EMEA, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa, where we have colleagues located in one of these eight countries. And our CPAC region, which is Southeast Asia and the Pacific. And we have colleagues located in Australia and Singapore. Together, these colleagues have over 460 years of Bentley ProjectWise experience. And that doesn't take into account any prior industry experience before they came to Bentley. Tying this back to this session, we could have titled it 101 Tips and Tricks and still not covered everything. So how to choose what to cover, where to start? Well, since I haven't been tasked with an actual consulting gig in about three years, who better than our global project-wise team to turn to to ask for suggestions? So that's what I did. I pulled the team and ask them to submit some ideas of frequently asked tips and tricks that they're showing to users, or even a couple that they're surprised that some users don't know. I cataloged all that information and grabbed about eight or nine of those, and I'm presenting them here, along with a couple of my own. Before we get to the top 10, understand that there's really no rhyme or reason as to their order. You could argue that I'm starting with probably the simplest tip and ending with the most complex trick. But that's subjective. And again, for some of the senior colleagues across the globe, there's probably not a lot of new information here. Anyway, let's move on to the top 10. First tip, the space bar. Again, pretty basic, but I'm still surprised at um, some colleagues that don't know about this tip. And, and frankly, it was a tip that uh, some of our colleagues also recommended. Moving over to project-wise, and I've set up an area in a data source uh, specifically for uh, this session, the top 10. And since it's tip one, I'll jump on tip one folder. And I've got a couple of documents here. 
And again, it, it's human nature, right, to uh, want to go to open a properties dialog on a document and right click and select properties. I mean, heck, that's what most applications do. And ProjectWise is no different. You have that ability to do that. Here's our dialog. But there's a faster, shorter way to do that. I'll close that box. And instead of right clicking on it, I'm just going to hit the space bar. Brings up the same properties window. Again, I'll close this. And that works uh, both for a document and a folder. Same thing. If I highlight just the folder here, hit the space bar. There's my dialog box. Simple tip, handy to know. Surprise sometimes that users uh, aren't aware, but there you go. On to the second tip, the double click or double click action. Moving back to project wise, like a lot of applications, if I want to open a document, it's human nature, double click, and it'll start the application. In project wise's case, similar, but a little bit different. If I double click this document as example, which is a PDF, it's going to prepare and uh, check out that document from the database and then launch the application. If I slide this down a little bit, you'll see that this document is now checked out of ProjectWise. If I close this document, ProjectWise is going to expect an action from me, for the most part, depending on how you have your ProjectWise configured. So I'll close this. And here we have a check-in box where I have a variety of options. And the point of this tip is not to cover these. I'll just go ahead and free this document. For some users, either you have personas where you're largely opening up uh, non-editable documents, or perhaps you prefer to have your users double-click action, just view a document. Therefore, you're not left with a bunch of uh, documents that are checked out when users forget to check them back in. So you could change the setting, and there's a variety of ways that you can do that. As an administrator, you can, of course, set that globally for all your users. But if I'm a user and I'm thinking, you know, I'd rather just set that for me. I, I'd rather not have to check in a document. I'd rather not, ha rather not have that dialog pop up. I'd rather bypass that uh, and have my first instinct just to view something, because that's generally what I do inside of ProjectWise. As a user, I can do that if I go up to Tools, select Options, and I click my Settings tab. Now, in truth, what I see here is largely dependent upon my administrator allowing me to see this. But for most users, you can change this. So if I expand my document list option, you'll see here double click action. And if I expand this, you'll see that my default, which is the standard default with out of the box project wise, is set to open the document, which is going to check it out and fire the app. If I want to change that, just double click this option and select my command. In this case, like I said, I'll use view, save that. And now when I double click this document, similarly, it's going to start the application. But as I slide this down, you'll note it didn't check it out. So it should be a uh, performance improvement, uh, less traffic on your network. And I'm not having a bunch of potentially having some files left checked out of ProjectWise because a, uh, a user may just close the app and forget to check it back in. Tip three. I see that, but why? And this one has to do with security. And it's one of the tips that a colleague of mine sent in. And it comes back to the fact that some users aren't completely familiar with how permissions work inside of ProjectWise, especially when it comes to document security versus folder permissions. Let's take a look at that. Again, I'm going back to ProjectWise Explorer. And you'll note here that I'm logged in as my IMS account. And as, as a, my own account, I'm in the administrator group. So I'm seeing everything. And tip three, which is this particular uh, tip, I expand this folder, and you'll see I have an, an A and B subfolder. If I just click on the B folder, you'll note I've got one document in here. It's just uh, water blueprints. If I uh, look at the security in the folder, so I'm highlighted on the folder, and I can uh, my preference is to always go to the Access Control tab to look at security. Now, this tab may not be enabled for every user, so keep that in mind. But if it is, it's easier for me because I can see both folder and document security in the same dialog box. And you'll see here that uh, administrator group, which I'm in, 
my Bill D. Gregorio account, uh, set default control. And um, I also have assigned here my ProjectWise user conference group, which essentially has the ability to read and write uh, at the folder level permission. But you'll note my document security is wide open. And I'll get to that in a second. If I want to see a little bit more detail here, um, what I can do is I can come up to my tools, user management. And from here, if I expand my groups and I expand my ProjectWise user conference group, you can see here that my PWUC or ProjectWise user conference under bar one user is in this particular group. Okay, great. What that means is if I'm not part of the administrator group or this ProjectWise user conference group, I'm not going to see tip three folder. Okay, that's fine. Let's cancel that out. Now I'll log out of ProjectWise Explorer and I'll log back in using a logical account. So I'll right click, log in as, and I'm going to use my PWUC underscore two account. And I'm going to navigate down to that same folder, Project Quest Top 10. But you see here, as I'd hoped, right, I do not see the tip three folder. Perfect. However, let's look a little deeper. Now, if you remember, in one of those folders, I had a document that had the word blueprint in it. Now, I don't remember the exact file name. So I do remember the word blueprint. So I'm going to type that up in my search bar, my quick search. I'll just say blueprint. And this would work similarly if I'm using an advanced search. And I'll surround it with um, asterisks because I'm not sure if blueprints was at the beginning, the end, or somewhere in the middle. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and hit enter. And that's running the query. And what I would expect to find, or rather message that I get back, would be no documents found. But look, it found what are blueprints. Now it found that, and this is in a folder that I don't have access to. If I right click on this and select open folder, ProjectWise doesn't really know what to do. So it found the document. Now, I don't have the ability to see that document because I'm not part of that folder permissions, yet it found it in a search. So I'll bet many of you are wondering, Bill, can I actually edit that document? Let's take a look. I'll return to the quick search bar, select the down arrow, which reveals any previous searches, pick blueprint, hit enter. There's my document. Since I'm logged in as PWC2, uh, my double click action is still set to open. So I'll go ahead and open that document. And it does indeed open. But can I actually edit and save it? Let's give it a try. I'll just come up to draw and I'll just put a little squiggly here just to prove the point. And I'll go ahead and save this document back into ProjectWise. And I'll go ahead and check it in. And while it's checking in, think about why did he get a save button and have to check it in? See if you can figure that one out. And my document did indeed check in. So let's see if it actually saved the change. This time I'll right click on my document and I'll just view it. And it did save my changes, which I kind of expected because we don't have any document security set on this folder. So that's the moral of the story. Ensure that when you're setting your permissions, that you're setting it at both the folder and document level. Okay. Let's move on. I'll go ahead and close this. Tip four. And no, I'm not angry. I'm not yelling at anybody. These are characters. Okay. In, in particular, you need to take care of how you name a folder. If you're naming a folder or document in Windows, it will not let you apply one of these characters to that name. However, Project Workers works 
a bit differently. Understand that when you create a folder in ProjectWise, for example, you're creating a record in a database. You're not actually creating a folder in Windows. So if you try and use one of these characters above, um, ProjectWise will generate a message for you telling you that it's not a valid system name, but it would go ahead and actually let you create this folder. Let's take a look at that. So I'll right click on my top 10 and I'll say create a folder. And let's say I'll just say tip uh, number four in this example. And then I'll follow that by a colon. Click OK. And there's my message. It's not a valid system name. It's an illegal name. Uh, and it's reserved by the system. So are you sure you want to create this folder? Again, I'm only creating a record in a database. Database doesn't care. So I'll go ahead and say yes. OK, and there's my folder. Perfect. However, at some point in time, if I ever had to export the documents that were in this folder, and I right click and I'll just say export, even though we don't have anything in the folder, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I say next, and I could just pick anywhere that I want to export to, I'm going to get an error message. Okay, folder's not created. It's not a valid system file name. So what I'd need to do is I'd need to go back and rename this folder and get rid of any uh, non-recognized character, which could be a daunting task if you have a lot of these uh, constructed that way. So in short, it's best to avoid any of the characters um, that ProjectWise, well, rather that Windows doesn't recognize inside of ProjectWise. And again, there aren't that many. So it's both backslashes, colon, asterisk, question mark, double quote. Single quote works, by the way. Uh, greater than, less than, and the old DOS pipe command. Tip five. Let's take a look at links. Let's move back to ProjectWise. Now, when I select a document or folder work area in ProjectWise, the full path to the selected item always displays in the address bar. And let me just go back to tip one. Doesn't really matter where I go. And I'll come up, come up and select any document here. And as you'll notice up in the address bar is the uh, link to that document. If I right click here, I have the opportunity to copy the URL or copy the URN. So what's the difference? In short, a URL will provide a clear text link to the document, whereas a URN uses the full path GUID or globally unique ID to that document. So let's take a look at what that really means. I'll open up a Word document that I just happen to have open for this. And you can see here I have two hyperlinks to a document inside of ProjectWise. The first one is an example of a URL. And if I hover over that, we can see that that link will take me to the document using its clear text name. In other words, I can pretty much decipher what the location of that document is just by reading that. The URN link, on the other hand, when I hover over that, just gives me the GUID, the globally unique ID to that document. So there's some pros and cons here to both. Um, my preference and the one I always recommended to users is go with the URN. It's got the biggest pro, and that is if I have a link to a document that's using a URN and that points to a document in ProjectWise that's either been renamed or moved, that link is not going to break. Okay, so that's the biggest pro here of any of them. If you want to look at a con for a URN, the link breaks if the document's deleted or replaced with a document of the same name. And you can't really tell where you're going in ProjectWise until you click on it. I'm not going to be able to ascertain the location by looking at that globally unique ID. Uh, to me, those are minor problems into the major benefit of not losing that link if that document's renamed or moved. Looking at the URL instead, so pro with that is I could just look at the link and get an understanding of where that document resides in ProjectWise without clicking on it. Okay, not a big deal to me. 
And that works if a document's deleted and replaced with a document of exactly the same name. That link won't break, where the URN will break. Again, to me, the URN option is better. A couple of cons with the, uh, the URL. Uh, it can be very long, depending on my folder structure. Right? So it would take a bit of time to decipher. And, and again, it breaks if the folder is renamed or the files move to a different folder, which is a, a huge, huge thing for me. Tip six, uh, the organizer. Switch back to Project Wise Explorer. And for this example, I'm going to log out as my PWC2 user. And I'll go ahead and log back in as my uh, IMS account. The Project Wise Organizer option is used to manage documents that you currently have checked out, copied out, or perhaps exported. If you're an administrator, a user list displays the filter select section of the dialog, which lets you manage documents that are checked out, copied out, or exported by other users. In a bit more lay terms, it's a neat way for me to identify if I have any documents that I've checked out um, when I'm leaving ProjectWise. That, that's what's most valuable to me. I mean, there have been a number of times back in my days as a CAD operator where I've been bouncing in and out of documents. Heck, when I was in piping and we you know, it's a Friday, we're getting a lot of ISOs out. Oftentimes I'm bouncing between documents. And yeah, there's times that I probably didn't check documents in in a timely fashion. So what's nice about the organizer is if I go to log out of ProjectWise, or if I actually close ProjectWise altogether, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll just log out for now. Before logging out, if I, uh, if I have any documents that are checked out, I'll get a, with this option enabled, and this could be enabled by your administrator, uh, I'll get a dialog box, resizable, um, that tells me any documents that I have checked out. And this is really valuable to me for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, like I said, I could have been bouncing in and out of uh, multiple documents and didn't realize I had them checked out. And what I could do is I could highlight all of them, uh, and I could right click and say, check in, or I could pick the icon up top to check it in. Other scenario is there are times when I was a designer that I'm working on a drawing that I don't want anybody else to touch. But I also understand that when I have a document checked out to my local working directory, it isn't backed up. Working directories aren't backed up. Servers are backed up. So to minimize any potential loss of data, what I might like to do is, is get my file back to the server while keeping it checked out to me. And there is an option inside of ProjectWise that's called update server copy, which I can initiate from inside some applications. I can initiate right from ProjectWise Explorer, or I can initiate it right here from local document and organizer. So again, if I'm in and out of a couple of different files and I didn't remember to do this, it allows me an opportunity to do that before I close out of ProjectWise. So again, similarly, I can right click here and I could say, update my server copy, which is essentially saying, copy the document back to my storage area location, my master location, but leave it checked out to me because I'm not finished editing it. And again, I can right click on that here, or I can come up here and I could pick one of the, uh, the icons for um, update server copy here. I could pick the icon to do that. Again, it's a handy tool. Uh, I can also manage any documents here that I have copied out. So anytime I have a document that's copied out, for example, as a reference file to a CAD drawing, they're here. And if I ever want to purge my local working directory, so let's say over time, I may have a lot of documents copied out. Maybe it's filling up my hard drive. So I want to remove those, those copied out documents as reference files. Well, some users might think, well, I'll just go to the working directory and find them in there or, or go through, Project Wise, or through Windows Explorer, find them there and just get rid of them. And that's a bad idea because what happens there is um, ProjectWise still thinks they're copied out so you're actually creating orphan records inside your database. Not a good practice. The better practice here would be to highlight the documents that you have copied out, right click, and you purge them. Basically, that'll remove them from the hard drive, but it'll also reset the, uh, the database setting that says that they're not copied out to your working directory. It's just a much cleaner, safer way to do that. So this dialog box presents several options for users. Once I close the box, regardless if I do anything or not, it will log me out of ProjectWise Explorer. 
Tip seven, kind of in the same vein, don't think locally. Okay, so again, I'm not really gonna demo this one because there's not much to demo. Again, another one submitted by my colleagues. They still find users that check out documents from ProjectWise and they'll go work directly on those documents in the local working directory. That's a bad practice to get into. And I'm actually surprised that that's done. In addition to potentially losing data, I mean, I could easily accidentally delete a file from the working directory and now ProjectWise thinks it's checked out and that presents a different set of challenges. Uh, some of the integrations don't work. So if I'm working directly on that working directory and I don't have ProjectWise started, I lose some, some of my integrations. If I need to attach a reference file as one example, I won't be able to do that because I'm not working through ProjectWise. Don't work through the, work lo the local working directory. Work straight through ProjectWise. Tip eight, searching through Microsoft Teams. And this is the one that I mentioned way back in the beginning as not referring to design integration, but it was one, a couple of people last week said, hey, I can't see something in Teams, how come? So I thought, yeah, you know, I'll add that here. It's a quick, simple thing. It's like a lot of other things. If you don't know it, it's perplexing. So for this example, I am going to switch to Microsoft Teams. And here you'll notice that I'm in a team site. And in that team site, I've set up a connection back to a project-wise data source. So I'm essentially using a web connection. And from here, I've got all my folders. And the question that I was posed twice last week was, oh my gosh, Bill, hey, when I use the web component, I can see my saved searches and I can use them. But that doesn't work through Teams. When is that capability going to come? Well, it's there. It's just a little trickier to see. When you uh, set up a data source through the web connection in Teams, by default, it's minimized. So if you notice this little arrow right here, if I just expand that, that will reveal your saved searches. So again, you've got your global, your personal, whatever you have set up will work. But when you set this up initially, that's going to be hidden. So it appears that the saved searches don't work through Teams, but they do. Tip nine, ah, the dependency viewer. Okay, it's a neat little option that not a lot of people use. Again, back over to ProjectWise Explorer. And I'm gonna log in back to my data source using my IMS account. And I'll go down to tip nine, civil, and I'll click on my DGN folder. And here we have a selection of CAD files. And you'll notice here, depending on whether or not there's reference files attached, you'll notice here that some of the icons have a little icon embedded inside. So the little icon is uh, reflective of a, a hierarchical tree. And that hierarchical tree will tell me that there's reference files that are attached to this particular design file, whereas these down here on the bottom, they don't have any reference files attached. So it's very handy to understand what is attached and how that may be impacted should I want to delete or rename a reference file. And this is one of the things that sets ProjectWise apart from using Windows and, and frankly other document management systems is we have the ability to see what's attached before we do anything. Uh, and we have a couple of ways to do that. So I'll highlight the, uh, the Sheets file. And honestly, I could right click on that Sheets file and I can come down to Set and I can look at Show References. And this will pop up a dialog box that will tell me any reference file that's attached to this master document. And you can see I have here a series of reference files and some of these reference files have masters. And again, it gives me an idea that, okay, if I'm gonna do something with this details drawing, that's gonna have an impact to this, this design file. But there's a more in-depth way to do this, and I'll cancel this window. And again, keeping the sheets drawing highlighted, I'm going to come down to my dependency viewer. Now, assuming that you have this installed and set up for yourself, this gives me a bit of a different insight. So now here, I have a more of a graphical view, so I don't have to right-click on anything. I can see that here are these design files that are attached. And I can also see that some of these have reference files attached. What's kind of neat about this is I get, I get some information right on this page. Right off the bat, I can see that I have edit options or edit rights 
on these documents because I have the pencil. I can also tell by seeing that pencil that these documents are not checked out by another user, right? So I can edit these if I had to. I also see that some of these have reference files attached to them. If I highlight any one of the reference files, you'll notice that uh, I'll get a green arrow that's telling me it's pointing back to my master design file, which is kind of handy to know. I can do a couple of things here. So for example, I can come over to settings and I can change my window position to floating, which means I can pop it out for some of the more complex designs. I now have uh, the ability to get a little bit of a bigger map. And you'll notice some tabs across the side here. So I can do some neat things here. First of all, I can do a search from within here and I can search for any type of document that is part of this, uh, this family. So if I just typed in border, for example, and hit search, it'll show me any of the attachments that have border. All right, so it's a handy way to do a search. Again, I could have a master file that has dozens of reference files attached. So much easier to see through this view than it would be to try and sift through anything from a graphical perspective. What's also nice here is I can go down to block filter as one example, and I could change my nesting depth. So right now my filter is set to one, but let's say if I set that to three and I hit the green arrow to apply that, I now get a much further nest, nesting depth. So in this example, it doesn't go down to three, but it goes down to two. So I get an opportunity now to see what reference files are attached and the impact to this. So this particular design file is not only attached to this as a reference file, it's attached to this one as a reference file and this one as a reference file. So there could be some impact here if I decide that I no longer need that document or let's say that document's gonna be superseded. I wanna make sure I use care in that because it's used widely on this particular document. So this is, a, this is actually a pretty powerful tool. I have got a whole bunch of options across the top. I can zoom in and out of this particular window. Again, I've seen some nesting depths here that get down to seven, eight levels and, and hundreds of design files here. So it's not as easy to see as you can in a, in a much simpler example. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. I can take a window if I wanted to of a selected area uh, and highlight multiple reference files. So I have a bunch of options here. It's a, it's a neat tool. It's something that I, um, again, I could probably spend an hour just on the dependency viewer and going through all the options and the properties and all the block filters. So it's something that, uh, again, just a little tip, probably familiarize yourself with this a little bit more. And if I just close this, it'll just pop it back into place inside of my uh, dependency viewer inside the preview pane. And my last tip is the field operator. And this can be used uh, kind of handy if you're doing a project-wise search. And again, this was another one that a colleague of mine brought to a bunch of us attention. Frankly, this one I didn't even know existed until he brought it to our attention. And I'll go back to project-wise explorer. And it's just another way to perform certain advanced searches. So. Let's open up one of our advanced searches. And for this one, I'll use document search, which is the typical one most users use. And let's say I wanted to find all the documents. And this will give you one example of many. Uh, I want to find all the documents that are checked out. So I can come to status and you'll see here, I've got checked out, checked in, exported, so on and so forth. So if I just say, show me all the documents that are checked out, and I don't care who, just show me all the documents that are checked out and I'll hit apply. And because I'm starting at the data source level, it'll show me everything in the data source that I have access to that's checked out one document, which is probably correct. Now, that's one way of running this search. Here's another way to run the search. And I'll just click on another folder here and stay in the same search box, but I'm gonna do this search a different way. So instead, I'm gonna come into this document name field. And this field operator will work, I believe it works in every field here, by the way. And if I just type in dollar sign field, and in parentheses, I'm going to put the ID number value for this field operator. And in this example, I'm going to use 12. And I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and I'll close that with a dollar sign. 
and I'll say not in, and I'll use three examples. I, O, if, and I'll close that parenthesis. So basically what I've written here is, give me a list of documents that aren't checked in, checked out, or in final status. And if I go ahead and click apply, my expectation is it's going to come back and find nothing, to be honest. And it doesn't. But what makes this handy is, and, and again, if we've got any administrators out there, sometimes we get documents that get stuck going back and forth with ProjectWise. If you actually looked at a database, it might say going out or coming in. In those examples, there's no way to search on that status inside of ProjectWise. What this would do is it would reveal any of those documents. So if it's not in one of these um, status, it would present itself a list for me. So it's kind of a handy thing to do. So I could also, for example, using, let's click OK here, come back to this field. If I change this to SI, okay, this is essentially telling me detect any files that are coming in from a set where SI is the moniker for uh, set coming in. And again, there's a, there's a bunch of options here. Um, let me show you. I've broken this down into a Word document that I think would be helpful for everyone. And here's an example of that. So basically what the field ID is doing is it's using a bunch of different uh, query properties for different operations within ProjectWise. So each number is associated to a different field. So in my example here, we're field 12. That's actually uh, the DMS status. And again, I found this a handy way to find out any documents that may be stuck in either outgoing or coming in state within a ProjectWise data source. And again, each one of these has multitude of options um, that you can use. So what I can do in, in closing here is I can make this document available to anyone that needs it. I'll actually work with the colleague who identified this tip and get something written up in, in B communities if it isn't already there by now. And that's it. Moving back to the PowerPoint, that brings me to my Q&A. So I'll go ahead and stop this video and dial into the session. Thanks for watching.